You've probably heard of the Oval Office and the Situation Room, but did you know that there are numerous secret rooms in the White House? You might be surprised to learn that the White House, which is estimated to be worth close to $400 million today, has a bowling alley, chocolate shop, hidden indoor pool, and even a cinema. There's even a secret bunker, a medical room, and a special guest bedroom for the Queen of England. There's much more to the White House than just the West Wing. Here's a detailed look at all the amazing features of the White House. The White House is perhaps the most famous building in the world, and it has changed a lot since President John Adams moved in in 1800. Yes, America's first president, George Washington, didn't live in the White House as it hadn't been built yet. Back then, it wasn't even called the White House. It didn't gain its formal title until 1901 when it was named by President Theodore Roosevelt. The home and office of the U.S. President was previously known as a Presidential Palace and then later the Executive Mansion. Historians estimate that it cost $232,372 to build the White House, and today, the White House is believed to be worth as much as $397.9 million. Irish-American architect James Hoban was the visionary behind the White House's classic design. He was commissioned to design the White House after winning a competition along with a $500 prize. So just how big is the White House? It's about 55,000 square feet and sits on 28 sprawling acres. The palatial presidential abode has 132 rooms and 35 bathrooms spread over six floors. It's not always politics at the White House. Being president is by far the most difficult job in the world and obviously very stressful. If you need proof, just look at how gray former President Barack Obama's hair turned in a mere eight years. Thankfully, there are a lot of ways for a president to unwind. Even the most powerful person in the world needs to relax sometimes. That's why the White House is filled with plenty of fun rooms for the first family to enjoy. The basement of the White House is essentially a giant shopping center filled with numerous goods and services available to the president. There's a flower shop with a wide variety of expensive and even rare flowers. Flowers are purchased in bulk and refrigerated so they can be used later on at state dinners or as decoration around the White House. As much as $252,000 worth of flowers are purchased every year for the White House. The White House's chocolate shop is where pastry chefs make intricate desserts for the president and distinguished guests. There have been some amazing sweet treats made over the years, including a giant Easter egg and a White House made of marzipan and white chocolate. Perhaps one of the coolest rooms in the White House is the bowling alley. It features comfy sofas and custom-made bowling balls. Each bowling ball features an image of the White House and they are fittingly colored either red, white, or blue. The bowling alley is only one lane, but that's more than enough for the first family. The current White House bowling alley is not the original. The first bowling alley was built in 1947 on the ground floor of the West Wing as a gift to President Harry Truman. The original bowling alley no longer exists and has since been replaced by the Situation Room. Surprisingly, Truman was not particularly fond of bowling, but that's okay because his staff still got plenty of views out of the bowling alley. They even formed a bowling league at the White House. The current bowling alley was built in 1969 by President Richard Nixon and his wife Pat, who were both avid bowlers. On the third floor of the White House, you'll find a state-of-the-art gym filled with weights and exercise equipment. Former First Lady Michelle Obama regularly used the workout room and was even filmed there while she was promoting her Let's Move campaign to stop childhood obesity. The third floor also has a music room that was renovated by former First Lady Hillary Clinton. Before the renovation, the music room was just a sitting room, so it was a wise decision to make the update. Former President Bill Clinton spent a lot of time in the music room playing his saxophone. There have been multiple pools at the White House over the years. The White House indoor pool was built in 1933 for President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who suffered from polio. FDR would use the pool as therapy to relieve his pain. President John F. Kennedy regularly used the pool to ease his back pain, and he was even known to go hold pool parties with his female assistants. The pool remained until Nixon became president, and then the decision was made to cover it and instead build a press briefing room in its place. Since 1970, reporters have gathered in the James S. Brady press briefing room to get the facts straight from the president. Instead of a swimming pool, there's now a press pool. The White House also has an outdoor pool, which was built in 1975 by President Gerald Ford. Ford considered reopening the indoor pool, but he didn't want to move the press room. Instead, Ford chose to build a large rectangular pool on the South Lawn. The Clintons even added an outdoor spa. The pool also has a cabana, which was renovated in 2002, and now includes solar panels. The solar panels are used to provide hot water to the cabana and heat the pool and spa. The White House even has a home cinema where the first family can watch any movie they want, even if it's still in theaters. The White House Family Theater has 42 seats and is located in the East Wing. Former President Jimmy Carter viewed more movies in the theater than any other president. He reportedly watched 480 during his four-year term, including all the president's men. The game room on the third floor of the White House has a pool table and an $80,000 golf simulator. 
The game room has existed since at least the first Bush administration. George H.W. Bush was an avid pool player, as was his wife Barbara and their son, former President George W. Bush. It's not all fun and games at the White House. The White House has a lot of important features that set it apart from other political residences around the world. The White House's medical unit is in the Eisenhower Executive Building where presidents can receive routine checkups and be prescribed medication. If the situation is more serious, then the president has to be rushed to the hospital. There are numerous bunkers at the White House, including the Presidential Emergency Operations Center, which is located below the East Wing. It's a secure command center that was built during World War II and has been used numerous times since then, most notably during the 9-11 attacks. There are also rumors of a new secret bunker under the North Lawn that has multiple passageways in case the president needs to escape. The bunker was reportedly built during the Obama administration and would be used in case of a doomsday scenario. The White House has a lot of rooms, but some are much nicer than others. The aptly named Queen's Bedroom features a four-poster bed and is part of a suite of rooms that includes the Queen's sitting room and the Queen's bath. The room is decorated in the federal tile and the bed is believed to have once belonged to President Andrew Jackson. Royalty from around the world have stayed in the Queen's bedroom, including Queen Elizabeth II, who first stayed there in 1957 when she visited President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Royalty from the Netherlands, Greece, and Norway have also stayed in the Queen's bedroom. On the second floor, you'll find the Lincoln bedroom, which President Abraham Lincoln once used as his office, hence the name. Close foreign allies of the president typically stay here, and the room features unique decor such as a holograph of the Gettysburg Address on the bedroom's desk. Some believe that the White House is actually haunted and that Lincoln's ghost roams the halls. Sightings of Lincoln's ghost usually occur in the Lincoln bedroom. First Lady Grace Coolidge, Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands have all claimed to have seen Lincoln's ghost. During the Obama administration, the rooms were open to the public. Guests could stay in either the Lincoln bedroom or Queen's bedroom for $400 per night as long as reservations were made far enough in advance. The most famous room in the White House is undoubtedly the Oval Office, which serves as the president's working space. The first Oval Office was located in the old Executive Office building and was constructed by President William Howard Taft in 1909. The Oval Office burned down in 1929 and FDR decided to build a new Oval Office in the West Wing. The current Oval Office was completed in 1934 and remains there to this day. Except for the furnishings, the Oval Office has changed very little since then. The President's desk in the Oval Office is one of a kind. It's made from English oak timbers from the British Arctic exploration ship, the HMS Resolute. The desk was gifted to President Rutherford B. Hayes by Queen Victoria in 1880. The New York Historical Society built a replica of the Oval Office for $2 million. The replica is a permanent fixture on the museum's fourth floor and is modeled after the Oval Office of the Reagan administration. The Situation Room is the intelligence center of the White House. This is where the President deals with crises at home and abroad while communicating with the National Security Advisor, White House Chief of Staff, and Homeland Security Advisor. The room is soundproof and has six flat screen televisions for secure video conferences. It's colloquially referred to as the woodshed, and contrary to popular belief, it is not located in an underground bunker. The Situation Room was built by JFK following the failed Bay of Pigs invasion. President Kennedy recognized there was a need for a secure room as he felt he could no longer trust some of the information he was receiving from national security advisors. The White House has had many renovations over the decades. The most significant and costly renovation occurred between 1949 and 1952 during the Truman administration. The Truman reconstruction was practically an entire rebuild of the White House. The entire interior of the White House was gutted and rebuilt at a cost of about $5.3 million. That's almost $53 million when adjusted for inflation. The reconstruction was absolutely necessary, as engineers deemed the White House unsafe and on the verge of imminent collapse. President Truman and the First Family were moved across the street until the White House was fixed. First Families are given $100,000 from Congress to redecorate and renovate the Oval Office and the White House's private quarters. However, some presidents have spent much more than that. Obama spent about $1.5 million redecorating decorating the White House during his administration and used his own money to do so. He even declined the $100,000 redecorating budget from Congress. In 2017, the White House underwent a $3.4 million renovation that included updating the 27-year-old HVAC system, improving the IT systems, and repairing the South Portico steps for the first time since the Eisenhower administration. Presidents get to choose which art is hung on the walls of the Oval Office, and most choose new rugs and curtains when they redecorate. Obama used red curtains while Clinton went with gold curtains. The White House has caught on fire many times. During the War of 1812, the British set the White House ablaze. On Christmas Eve 1929, the White House caught fire again after a blocked chimney vent or defective electrical wiring caused thousands of pamphlets in the White House attic to ignite. After each fire, extensive repairs were required. That's it folks! What do you think is the coolest room in the White House? Do you wish you could stay in the Lincoln bedroom? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching!